A Hoffmann voltameter is an apparatus for electrolyzing water, invented by the German chemist August Wilhelm von Hoffmann in 1866. First, I connected three PVCTs with an inner diameter of 20 mm, which are actually intended for drinking water installation, using PVC pipe and appropriate adhesive. I used a special pipe cutter to cut the PVC pipe to length. This way, perfect cuts succeed. In the next step, I cut three more PVC pipes to length accordingly. In five PVC pipe caps with an inner diameter of 20 mm, one eighth of an inch threads were cut. Pre-drilling was done with an 8.8 .8 mm drill. The threads are intended for screwing in 1 8 of an inch by 6 mm screw and hose nozzles. These already have a nooring for sealing. Three of the pipe caps were then connected to the T's using the already cut pipes. A 1 meter long acrylic tube with an outer diameter of 20 mm and an inner diameter of 16 mm was then cut to size, giving me two pieces with a length of 450 mm. After cleaning the cutting edges, they were glued into the tees and fitted with the two remaining pipe caps. I used a two component epoxy adhesive for this. An 8.8 mm hole was drilled into the bottom of this acrylic beaker with a capacity of 400 milliliters. Then a 1 8 of an inch thread was tapped. A screw and hose nozzle was also screwed in here. I used two graphite rods with a diameter of 6 mm and a length of 87 mm as electrodes. On two screw and hose nozzles, the hose nozzle was cut away, the bore was widened to 6 mm, and the graphite rods were then glued in place with two component epoxy. Next, I made the terminals for the electrodes. First I cut two brass tubes with an outer diameter of 7 mm, an inner diameter of 6 mm, and a length of 14 mm with a tube cutter.
A 3 mm hole was then drilled in the center of the two brass tube sections. The holes were afterward deburred on the outside and inside with fine sandpaper. M3 brass press and nuts were soldered to the two brass tubes. The screwed in stainless steel screw helps to ensure that the hole and the thread are in alignment. Flux should also be used to ensure clean soldering. After cooling, the stainless steel screws were removed. To remove excess flux, the brass tubes were placed in isopropanol for one hour. Subsequently, stranded wires were soldered on. The sheathing of the wires I use is made of silicon and is therefore resistant to heat and chemicals. To ensure proper galvanic contact with the graphite electrodes, I utilize M3 by 10 mm brass knurled screws. I took a similar approach to make the pinch cocks, except that I used this time 9 by 8 mm brass tubing, M6 brass pressing nuts, and M6 by 20 mm brass knurled screws. I also made small brackets for the pinch cocks out of a 10 mm thick PVC sheet, which were then glued in place with two component epoxy. On the flat side, I cut two M3 threads in each case. A 15 by 3 mm aluminum flat profile was then used to make brackets for the pipe clamps and for the pinch cocks. And this is what the fully assembled brackets look like. The linear aluminum end support blocks are intended for 10 mm shafts. The plastic pipe clamps are designed for pipes with a diameter of 20 mm. All screws and nuts are made of stainless steel.
Another bracket was made from a 40 by 4 mm aluminum flat profile. It is intended for fastening the pipe clamp for the acrylic glass speaker. I really wanted to add a scale to the two acrylic glass tubes so that I could measure volume. Then I stumbled across this adhesive tape measure. The dimensions are given in millimeters. That results in a volume of almost exactly 0.2 milliliters per millimeter. The adhesive tape measure is very thin and was easy to stick onto the acrylic glass tubes. To complete the tubing, the graphite electrodes and screw and hose nozzles were screwed into the threads provided. The base plate was prepared off camera. It consists of a PVC plate with the dimensions 200 by 200 by 20 mm. The front panel is made of 6 mm PVC plate and will later accommodate the banana jacks. The hole in the base plate is 10 mm. On the bottom side of the base plate I extended the hole to 14 mm with a Forstner drill and hammered an M10 stainless steel nut. To prevent slipping. Four self-adhesive silicon pads have been attached to the bottom side of the base plate. Next, a 1 meter long M10 stainless steel threaded rod was shortened by 190 millimeters. The cutting edge was then smoothed with a file. The next step was to screw the threaded rod to the base plate. Now the brackets were positioned on the threaded rod and each was secured with two M10 stainless steel nuts. Unfortunately, the clamping screws of the linear aluminum support blocks couldn't be tightened enough to hold them on the threaded rod alone. The pipe clamps should be positioned so that the tubing has no play in the vertical axis. After the tubing, the bracket with the pinch cocks was mounted on the threaded rod. Two pieces of silicon tubing 8 by 4 mm, each 100 mm long, were connected at one end with 6 mm plastic tubing connectors.
The silicone hoses were then passed through the pinch cocks and connected to the screw and hose nozzles. The acrylic glass beaker was connected to the last remaining screw and hose nozzle. A silicone hose with the same outer and inner diameters was also used here. Now it was time to check the tightness of the apparatus. To do this, a newspaper was placed underneath. I then poured in distilled water until the level was above the top pipe caps. If there are no water spots on the newspaper overnight, the apparatus is tight. Otherwise, leaks can be sealed with two component epoxy if necessary. Finally, the two banana jacks were screwed in and connected to the graphite electrodes. It remains to show the Hoffman voltameter in operation. I use diluted sulfuric acid as the electrolyte. For this, 180 milliliters of 15% sulfuric acid was further diluted with 120 milliliters of distilled water. The sulfuric acid serves only to increase the conductivity of the water. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons.